Greetings. It is a pleasure to be with you folks today. Uh, I guess the first thing I need to do is identify who I am. Some of you may already have heard of some of my presentations that I've given in the past, but I am Richard Walker. And I want to take a moment to thank you for allowing me to give one of my many presentations. And first, I think it's important that you understand my professional background. Where am I coming from? Who am I? Well, after 30 years, I retired from the medical field, but I began my medical career while attending Indiana University in Allied Health. Uh, was my major uh, at IU, and then following my academic world, I joined the United States Army Medical Corps, and this was during the Vietnam War. I was stationed in Incheon, Korea, which was identified as a combat zone as well as uh, that of Vietnam. And after I had uh, finished my medical training at Fort Sam Houston, 50% of us were sent to Vietnam and 50% of us were sent to uh, Korea. After completing my military tour, I returned to the civilian world and assisted running pathology laboratories, both private and hospital clinical laboratories. In furthering my professional career, I also held both state and regional management positions for non-medical national and international companies as well. I completed my professional career with the international company of GlaxoSmithKline Clinical Laboratory Division, whereupon I took my retirement. My presentations are sponsored by Home Choice Network, where we believe in independence for seniors and peace of mind for families. Home Choice Network is a home care agency, which is licensed by the state of North Carolina and regulated by the Department of Health and Human Services out of Raleigh. We have been in existence for over 16 years. By the way, I have held the position of president of Toastmasters International Club of the Sand Hills here in Southern Pines in Pinehurst, North Carolina. This is a worldwide organization dedicated to public speaking and leadership development. At this time, I'd like for you folks to sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy this presentation. This presentation entails the fascinating subject of water. I assume you already guessed what I was gonna talk about today regarding my background. But water is a very fascinating subject. This is the first presentation of a five-part series regarding water. Water is a very, very in-depth subject and I think as we go forward with various presentations regarding water you will see the complexity as well as the simplicity and the extent of how water uh, affects our lives. Now I would like to help you understand very clearly that water is the essence of life and the role that water plays in our life is extremely important. So I oftentimes stress that water is the essence of life. So first of all, let's identify what is water? Well, water is known as, of course, I'm sure all of us are aware and have heard H2O. Well, what does H2O mean? It's a molecule and it's also identified as the Mickey Mouse molecule. Some of you may or may not have heard that particular name associated with the water molecule. Well, first of all, H2O molecule has two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom. And since the oxygen atom is much larger than the hydrogen atom, it makes the two hydrogen atoms appear as Mickey Mouse's ears because the two hydrogen atoms are 104.5 degrees apart from each other. So it looks like Mickey Mouse's ears. Both hydrogen and oxygen, and this is an interesting part, are gases, with hydrogen being the most abundant. 
atom in the universe and oxygen is the third most abundant. And consequently, it is not surprising that scientists most certainly uh, have come to the conclusion and scientific identification uh, has identified that water is throughout the universe. Where do you think comets come from? They are basically ice, large ice chunks going through the universe. And when a comet gets close to the sun, it partially melts, and that's what leaves the comet tail streaking across the sky. Halley's Comet, you may have remembered, was a few years ago. And I used to pull the car off the side of the road uh, away from a lot of lights when I was handling my uh, professional career. And I would look up in the bright, starry, beautiful sky and watch the Halley's Comet. There are moons around other planets that have more water than what we have on Earth. And again, that may be hard to believe, but there's a lot of water out in the universe. So let's talk about the Earth. Let's talk about our home. Over 71% of our Earth is covered with water as liquid, ice, or vapor. What is certainly surprising is that scientists have learned that there is 10 times the amount of water in the Earth than in our oceans. Most of this water is over 200 to 400 miles down in the crust of the Earth. So our planet is saturated with water. Abundance or the lack of, that's an interesting topic. Yes, we do have an abundant amount of water on and in our planet, but now we're gonna to get to some more facts. 97% of this water is not available for man's use or consumption. In particular, I would say for man's consumption. The use of the water uh, in boats and sailing and swimming, yes, it's there. We, we in most areas can use that water. But for consumption, no, 90% is, 97% is not available. This leaves 3% of fresh water, which is drinkable. But most of this 3% is still not available. And many folks do not realize this. Well, why? Well, for one thing, the North and the South Poles hold a lot of this 3% fresh water. And another large portion is in the clouds and vapor, along with biological retention. We'll talk more about that in a little while. Therefore, what is left for man is around three-tenths of 1%. Now we've gone from a lot of water on the planet down to the use and availability of man of three-tenths of 1%. But it even becomes more interesting as time goes by, and I'll cover that for you. What do I mean when I say biological retention? We take a lot for assumption. For one thing, our human bodies retain approximately 65 to 70% water. However, this applies to all living things. However, we have to follow, and a good example is of a maple tree, biological living plant. And on a hot summer day, a maple tree, an average maple tree, may use as much as 300 gallons of water as it is drawn from the ground, goes up the tree and out through the leaves in evaporation. Water is mainly distributed around the world via clouds, which are directly proportional to the status of our climate. As climate changes, so does the distribution of water around the world. And that's why, as there has been different times throughout history, climate changes, entire civilizations have had to relocate or die out because there became a desert area and no water. A good example are the Hopi Indians out west 
uh, of several thousand years ago used to have canals that you can see out in the desert. And yet there's no water in the canals to this day. No way, it's desert. Past civilizations have ceased to exist as I just mentioned. And Leish Greenland a thousand or 2000 years ago uh, was significantly changed as of today. So climate changes, life changes on Earth. We are surrounded with water, but less than 1% is available for the survival. This is something really to think about. The water molecule has some very strange characteristics, and I'd like to go back and discuss a little bit about some of the characteristics regarding the water molecule, because as you recall, the beginning of this presentation is, what is water? When in a frozen state, it is a solid and it floats. Most solids will sink, as you're aware of, but the solid of ice floats. When it becomes very hot above the boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes steam or vapor that we can feel but not always see. For example, like humidity. You can feel it, but you don't see it, but it's water, it's there. It, for example, water can also become down as, as rain, but it cannot form a drop of rain unless it is attached to a dust particle. And you might think, well, on a clear day, I don't see any dust and later on it rains. Well, there are tons and tons of dust particles from outer space coming into our world and earth here on a daily basis. And a lot of people are not aware of that. There is a, and then of course, dust that's kicked up as we have wind storms, tornadoes, and other storms that will kick up dust. So there's a lot of dust in the air that we don't always see or feel. When it freezes in the air, it becomes as a crystal particle that can float, as I mentioned earlier, as a solid foam, form, but is also called snow as it falls from the sky or sometimes known as sleet or hail. Water is incredibly unique. Without the consumption of this element, we as humans within three to four days are either dying or perhaps have died due to the lack of water. We need fresh, healthy water. But at the same time, drinking too much water can cause death as well and is known as water poison. So we have to keep our bodies balanced with the use of water. As stated by Robert Hansen, the author of the story of Earth, as we are living this very moment today, we must keep in mind, oceans are rising while they are becoming warmer and more acidic. Global patterns of rainfall are changing while the atmosphere is becoming more turbulent. Polar ice is melting, tundra is thawing, and habitats are shifting. As I bring this presentation to a close, I hope you have a better understanding about water and its abundance, or the lack thereof. And this plays a very key role in the support of humanity and life as we know it. We cannot put a price on the true value of water. Some folks call water blue gold. Following are some books I have read regarding water. A New History of Life by Peter Ward and Joe Kirschvik. That was in 2015, the book was published. The Story of Earth, like I mentioned, from Robert Hansen, that was 2012. Quench, the Quench the Thirst by Dana Cohen, an MD, and Gina Bria in 2018. With Speed and Violence by Fred Pierce in 2007 book. Drinking Water by James Saltzman is 2013. The Ripple Effect by Alex Prohom, that was in 2011. The Big Thirst by Charles Fishman, 2011. And The Body, by Bill Bryson, 2019. 
These are just a few books that I have read and studied, plus my medical background and my fascination of science uh, throughout the years. Locally in past years, I've had the opportunity to be a water specialist here in Moore County, North Carolina, testing, treating, and troubleshooting the challenges of Moore County water, both municipal and private well water. I have worked with certified local, county, national, and international water testing laboratories. And as I mentioned earlier, I retired after 30 years, as I mentioned, from the medical field. Consequently, I feel I am qualified to speak on the exciting subject of water. I wish to take a moment to thank you for allowing myself and Home Choice Network to spend some time with you. I realize I have covered a lot of material regarding the fascinating subject of water. However, we can revisit this topic at your convenience anytime. Please keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, that I do have more presentations regarding water. The contamination is a very interesting aspect of water. The solutions for healthy water is another one. How does our immune system uh, become affected with the water uh, we drink? So consequently, there are more subjects that can be discussed regarding water. It is always a pleasure to have time with you. And we at Home Choice Network take great concern in helping folks to take their medicine, eat healthy, and of course, drink good, fresh water. Your health and happiness are especially important to us. So you folks have a great day. Thank you.